Pomeranian scientist was shot in the head and throat outside his home in Tehran on Saturday. Deb Kafail is reporting that the scientist was working on a nuclear bomb detonator. Iran claims the assassination was the work of U.S. Israeli agents. What are the implications of America using assassination in our war against Iran? We'll discuss it today on politics and religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. This prophecy is perhaps the most sobering in the entire Bible. Listen to it. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. It's awesome in its implications. I'll never forget the day when I focused on this passage for the first time, to kill one third part of men. When I read that, I said, surely that doesn't mean what it says. I thought perhaps when it says a third part of men, it would mean a third part of the men in the army or in the war, not a third part of the entire world. So I went to the New King James, which tends to be a little more updated and accurate, and it said to kill a third of mankind. That was worse. That seemed to include all of the world. So then I went to several other translations, about 20 translations I looked at. One translation said, to kill a third part of all the human beings upon the earth. And that's when I realized I was looking at a prophecy that foretells, not predicts, but foretells, prophesies, the prophecies always come to pass, that prophesies a war that is going to kill one third of mankind. I know it's a war because in verse 16, it talks about an army made up of 200 million soldiers. Consequently, you know there's going to be a war if you're going to have 200 million soldiers. So here this prophecy is absolutely screaming at us from the pages of Revelation 9, verse number 15, to slay a third part of mankind. Now the prophecy states this will come from the Euphrates River area. On Saturday, someone assassinated one of the key scientists in Iran's nuclear program. He is being reported as to have been working on a detonator for a nuclear bomb, a nuclear bomb that Iran denies attempting to produce right now. However, when Iran started its nuclear program, they claimed they only wanted to enrich up to 4.9%, which is what is needed for the production of domestic electricity. But then they found reasons to uh, enrich up to 20% for supposed scientific reasons. And now that it seems they have the ability to enrich all the way up to 90%, which is what is required for a nuclear weapon. This report is that this scientist, 35 years of age, was working on a detonator for a nuclear bomb. In the meantime, Iran has tested missiles that can carry nuclear weaponry around the world. They recently put a satellite in the sky. It takes very powerful missiles to carry a satellite and to 
fling it out into orbit around the Earth. And yet, that's what they accomplished. Consequently, it appears that Iran is approaching becoming a nuclear power. It was reported a, a month or so ago that they were two months away from having enough nuclear fuel to produce a nuclear weapon. Now, I don't know for myself. I'm only going from the articles that I'm reading. These are the reports. I do know, however, that there has been a very well-planned and concerted war against Iran and its nuclear program. For example, when was it? I think it was last November, November the 27th of 2010. Let me just read this paragraph for you. Neither the experts nor public has forgotten that only nine months ago, on November the 27th of 2010, two leading lights of Iran's nuclear program were targeted for assassination by the same method in the middle of Tehran. Now, what happened was two motorcyclists came up Saturday on this scientist and shot him, one in the throat, one in the head, and killed him. Well, it was uh, only nine months or so ago that two motorcyclists again came up on an automobile carrying the scientist who was the foremost expert to counteract the effects of the Stutznet computer virus, uh, and they killed him. Uh, his name was Mr. Shariri. Now then, they also killed that same day, or, or shot that same day, Professor Abbasi, who survived the attack and was appointed vice president for nuclear affairs and chairman of the Atomic Energy Organization in uh, Iran. So this is the third scientist, at least, that they've made assault against. There also was a plane crash here a few uh, months ago in which several leading Iranian scientists died. So it appears that there is a concerted effort being carried out by someone. Nobody knows who for sure. Iran certainly thinks it's Israel and America that's doing these things. There's actually an article in Haaretz newspaper which came out on the 24th of this month. Murder of nuclear scientist is Israeli-American Terrorism Act. The article says Iranian parliament speaker Ali Larajani blamed Israel and the U.S. for the murder of an Iranian scientist on Saturday. Reported uh, on Sunday, Lara Jani was quoted in the Mare News Agency calling the killing an American Zionist act of terror. He added that the death was another sign of the degree of animosity in the United States. The Americans must think carefully about the consequences of such acts. Now, supposedly, we do not use assassination as uh, assassination against uh, heads of state and governmental officials as a policy in the United States of America. However, does that policy extend to nuclear scientists or other scientists? Well, I can't tell you that for sure. All I can tell you is that this man is very high up in the nuclear establishment in, in Tehran, and someone shot him. Uh, Iran believes it was Israel and the United States of America that conspired not only against him, but against the other two scientists back in November of 2010. Now, if this is true, what's all this mean? The prophecy says a war is coming from the Iraq-Iranian part of the world. The Euphrates River, which is where this war is to emanate from, begins in Turkey, comes down through Syria, and then all the way down through Iraq, finally emptying out into the Persian Gulf, right down where the Euphrates River touches the Iraqi-Iranian border. So this entire part of the world is where this war is coming from. Now, I didn't say that it might come from there. I am saying that it is going to come from there, absolutely. It's in the Bible, black and white. Open your Bible, read it for yourself. It is going to happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know I've talked about this many times before. 
But what do you think you heard Noah preach about when you went out to see him building his ark? He didn't preach about some obscure message somewhere. He talked about the flood that was coming, and he talked about it, and he talked about it, and he talked about it because it was going to mean the destruction of mankind. I'm talking about a war that's going to wipe out one person in three on this planet It is coming, ladies and gentlemen. If it's not coming, then the Bible is not true. The Bible is true. The prophecies have proven themselves over and over again. And so when we see what's going on over the weekend, the clash between the United States of America and Iran, will the U.S. be involved in this war? Almost certainly. We have 230,000 troops stationed in what's called the Euphrates River Basin, The 230,000 troops we have there, America is the number one proponent of military activity throughout the Middle East right now. We have the nuclear firepower to kill one-third of mankind. That's how many people are going to die. One-third of the human race, when this coming nuclear holocaust hits, one out of three will perish. Let me ask you this. Where will you be when all this comes down? Where's your place of safety? You know, there's only one real place of safety. The Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it, and they are safe. Only in Jesus Christ is safety. I can't tell you where to go to escape the coming Holocaust. I don't know where to go myself. But I'm not really worried about that. I'll tell you what I'm really worried about today, and that's preaching the message of eternal life. If you have eternal life, if I have eternal life, then we're not moved by these threats to this temporary existence because we know we already have secured our eternal existence. And that's what's important for every single one of us. If you've never read our brochure, What Do You Mean Born Again? Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The key to eternal life is to be born again. You must be born of the water and the spirit, or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Not my words, the words of Jesus Christ himself, John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. So I'm saying to all of you out there, If you want to have eternal life, there's only one way, and that's to be born again. We have a brochure that I wrote called, What Do You Mean Born Again? It's yours for the asking, no charge whatsoever. Give us a call, 1-800-END-TIME, or you can go to endtime.com. You'll see a question there on the right-hand side, What Do You Mean Born Again? Click on it and you'll see the article right there for you. Read it through carefully. If you don't understand something, pick up the phone, call us, 1-800-END-TIME. Ask to speak to one of our ministers on staff. He will be glad to talk with you and to help you as you're attempting to understand because everything, the most important question in your life or in the life of any person on earth is what do you mean born again? If when your end comes, whether it's by way of death or by way of the rapture of the church, if you are prepared at that time, then your life has been a smashing success. If you are unprepared, no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter how famous you are, then your life is a miserable failure. End Time Ministries presents End of the Age, a 30-minute commercial-free TV show hosted by Irvin Baxter. Every Monday, End of the Age airs on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., Daystar at 10 p.m., and on TBN every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. On End of the Age, Irvin depicts how modern issues like an establishment of a one-world government, the religion of Islam, a coming World War III, and more, line up so clearly with Bible prophecies written over 2,000 years ago. To get tomorrow's news today, be sure to tune into End of the Age every Monday on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., Daystar at 10 p.m., and on TBN every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. Visit endtime.com for more details or call us 
at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. The Bible prophesies about four great spirits which control the actions of human beings, leaders, and even governments. One is a force called Islam that was foretold by God 2,000 years ago. In Islam and Bible prophecy, the four horsemen, Irvin Baxter proves that Islam is in Bible prophecy. Request your copy of Islam and Bible Prophecy, The Four Horsemen, for a gift of $20 or request the CD for just seven. Call 1 800 in time. I used to wonder about Bible prophecy. My parents would talk about it all the time, but I was not sure what it was about. How does it all tie in with me as a teen? I didn't know the answer to this question until my parents told me about End Time Youth Corps Radio. If you have a teenager in your life, tell them that EYC Radio airs every Tuesday at 4.30 Central Time. They can only listen or watch by going to endtime.com slash radio. Don't let them go through life with unanswered questions. Point them in the right direction today. Point them to EYC Radio. Very important announcement. Listen closely this coming Friday evening. That will be at 7.30 p.m. on the 29th of July. I will be at the Dallas First Church, 5606 West Illinois Avenue, right here in Dallas, Texas. It will be at 7.30 p.m. I'm going to be speaking on the second coming, what's going to happen at the second coming, who will be ready, uh, all the details about the dramatic second coming, the most important single event since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So it's going to be an interesting evening. I hope you can be there. There's no charge to attend. However, uh, we would like for you to register for the conference, if you don't mind, by calling 1-800-END-TIME. You also can register online by going to endtime.com slash conferences. There's a place to register there. Why register? Because there's going to be a DVD drawing, and you will be qualified to uh, win a free DVD if you, in fact, did register. The drawing will be from the uh, those who have registered. So please uh, do that if you can. If you can't register, please show up anyway, 7.30 p.m. at 5606 West Illinois Avenue, Dallas, Texas. It's going to be a great evening. I hope you can make it and be with us. Our conferences have been fabulous this year around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We normally have one huge conference in Dallas. We decided this time to spread it around over the Metroplex, and so far it's been terrific. We were in Garland, then we were in Mesquite, now then we're in uh, the southern part of Dallas, uh, down around Highway 20, so it's going to be a great time. I hope you can be with us. If you need more information, simply go to endtime.com slash conferences or call us at 1-800-END-TIME. And by the way, do not forget, and am I ever excited and pumped about this, that we have launched our translation project to translate all 14 hours of DVD of the 14 most important prophecies of the entire Bible, 14 hours on DVD, uh, that will be translated into eight major languages of the world so that almost everybody on earth will be able to hear these prophecies that God specifically designed for these last times. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, this is going to be placed for digital download on the Internet. So we're going to virtually reach almost the entire world with this critical message. I'm excited, but we do need your help to get this done because translating all of these languages, 14 hours of DVD into all these languages is an expensive proposition. Our people here are working very hard to get it done. It takes about $20,000 per language. Consequently, if you'd like to donate to the translation project right now, these DVDs are going to uh, English speaking people 1.8 billion. But once these translations are done, no longer will we be confined to 1.8 billion. We will now be able to reach 6.3 billion, almost four times as many. Uh, 90% or so of the entire world's population will then be able to view what Almighty God put in His Bible that He wants the human race to know right here before the second coming. It's now going to be 
unsealed to the world. The Bible actually says that these prophecies were to be closed up and sealed till the time of the end. The translation into all the languages is, it's almost like the unsealing of this. But if you'd like to help with the translation project, please consider it. So far we've received $42,000. We have about $80,000 to go. So if you're out there and you can help, Please don't hesitate. I, I don't know of anything more important that we've ever done. So if you'd consider doing that, please help us with that. No matter, it doesn't matter. You may think your gift is too small. It's not. It's not. Uh, no matter whether it's a small gift or, hey, wouldn't I love it if someone gave $50,000 to put us way down the pike? Yes, I would. But would I love it if you were able to give $50? Absolutely. So no matter what you can do, please consider doing this. Now, this is a fulfillment of prophecy within itself because Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Well, it's time to go to the phones. And we're going way out to California, listening on the internet today. Uh, Keith is there. Hello, Keith. Hello. What you got in your mind, Keith? Hey, um, yeah, this is Keith. Um, anyways, I was going to I was gonna ask you on your timeline, um, so basically, with your timeline, you were saying that, so basically the first, uh, the birthing pains, the first three and a half years, basically, is because most of the seals have already been accomplished, then basically it's just going to be the Antichrist setting up his power, and then the temple being rebuilt, and then sitting on that throne. And then the, after that, then you're saying that we're just going to jump to the fifth, sixth seal, and then the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Is that correct? Uh, if I understood everything you were saying, yes. Um, the uh, Great Tribulation is the fifth seal. That's the souls under the altar crying, How long, O Lord, till thou dost avenge our blood upon those that dwell upon the earth? Uh, so let me just review real quick, Keith, to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. The yeah. final seven years is triggered by the confirmation of the covenant which will be the peace agreement between the Palestinians and the Israelis, which will place the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement, uh, under international supervision. Once that happens, the final seven years begins. During the first three and a half years, the Jewish temple will be rebuilt. Animal sacrifices will be resumed. And then the Antichrist, halfway through the seven years, is going to stand on the temple, claiming to be the ultimate authority there. Uh, some way he's going to say, I am God. That's the revealing of the Antichrist. That's when we will know for sure who he is. And that's the event called the Abomination of Desolation, which right. triggers the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is only three and a half years half years long, which of course is long enough, is during that final three and a half years that the mark of the beast will be implemented uh, and ultimately culminating with the battle of Armageddon. So uh, that's that's the overview as I see it. So you're saying, um, you're basically saying in that last three and a half years after he sits on the throne, declares himself as God, that the only thing that's left as far as the seals and stuff would be that big war, right? Uh, actually, the big war of Revelation chapter 9, verse number uh, 13 through 21, happens before the tribulation begins. Oh, the, really? The battle of Armageddon is a oh. separate war which happens at the end of the final three and a half years. So before or after he sits on the throne or before he sits on the throne, does that big war begin then? Before he sits on the throne. So during the first three and a half years, then? Actually, it will either be before the final seven begins, which is what I think is the case, or at least during the first three and a half years. We can prove for certain from Scripture that it must occur before the final three and a half years. Oh, really? And is that, is that the one that kills one-third of the world? Yes, that is. Okay. Uh, here's how you can understand it, Keith. The... Uh, war that kills one-third of mankind is the sixth trumpet war. That occurs in Revelation 9, verse 13 through 21. Then the great tribulation begins in Revelation 10, when an angel stands one foot on the land, one foot on the sea, declaring that delay shall be no longer, because immediately after that you move into chapter 11, which records the final three and a half years. John was told to measure the temple, uh, but don't measure the outer court of the temple because it'll be trodden down for the next 40 
two months. And then verse three talks about the two witnesses beginning to prophesy for yeah. 1,260 days, which also is, is the final three and a half years. So chapter 11 records the final three and a half years, uh, which begins in chapter 10. The war has to happen before that. But I mean, if one third is killed in the first three and a half years, how is anything going to be left to be able to, for the Antichrist to kind of run his, I mean, cashless society and all that stuff? Well, uh, you know, there are many people that believe the world's population has to be reduced. I mean, there are some radicals, some radical leftists that truly believe that we need to reduce the population of the world dramatically, that the world can no longer sustain the present level of population. So uh, the reduction of population will actually be welcomed by some of these people who also dream of a one-world governmental system. Now, uh, I don't know exactly how all this is going to play out, but there's still, after you kill one-third of mankind, there's still going to be over 4 billion people left on this planet. And it took until the early 1900s for there to even be 2 billion. So we're going to have plenty of people left during this final uh, seven years or so. So real quick, so then you feel that one-third kills then will happen probably right before that three and a half years is up, sometime in the first three and a half years, right? No, actually, I would rather think it will happen before the final seven begins. Okay. It, it's hard for me to envision that you would have one-third killed during the first three and a half years at the same time that you're building the temple, and it appears there will be a, a peaceful era there. So I would rather think that the war happens that kills one-third of mankind before the final seven, and that provides the impetus for the world, for the international community to say to Israel and the Palestinians, enough already, we can't tolerate this conflict any longer, you are going to do this now, and thus that would pave the way for the peace agreement that would trigger the final seven years. Years. I see. Wow, well, this is exciting. I mean, if it happened in September, this would just be, I'm sure for you, it's studying all this, all this, all these years, it's like, I mean, it's really exciting, interesting to see it happening. So, could, could be next well, month. It- it is exciting, Keith, but it's also a little bit uh, fearful as well. Yeah. The thing that's doing to me right now is motivating me to reach people because when you realize that 2.3 billion people are getting ready to be wiped off the face of this earth, right. most, most of them without salvation, uh, wow. that's the reason we're trying to reach them. I'm this, this translation project we're working on, I'm thinking, God, we've got to get this done as fast as we can because this could be the means for many of them being saved. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Uh, And, uh, you know, uh, I can't tell you for absolutely positive this war must come before the final seven years begins, but that's what I believe is going to happen. Your translation project, your website's already in other languages, or they're just going to be able to have the videos in other languages? Yeah, the first thing we're going to do is translate the uh, 14 hours of DVD on the main prophecies of the Bible uh, into the six major languages of the world, plus Hebrew, plus Italian. So we can have those done within the time we receive the funding. We'll have them done within four months. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your... uh, Hey, thank you for the call, Keith. We appreciate the question. Good questions, by the way. And I want to go now to Oklahoma and, uh, well, no, wait, let's wait because we're up against another break. Wow. Time absolutely flies uh, when we're having fun. So those of you that are there on the screen, please wait right there because I don't want to bring you on when there's no time to talk to you. Uh, We're talking today about the Iranian scientist that was killed over the weekend. It is being reported by Debka File that he was actually working on a nuclear bomb detonator. Uh, And, of course, that's the reason he was picked and targeted for assassination. Uh, It is believed by either Israelis or Americans. We don't know for sure. Nevertheless, ominous developments. Ultimately, war is going to happen from that part of the world. Because of our faithful partners, we're impacting millions of lives across the globe on a daily basis through our magazine, radio program, Politics and Religion, our TV show, End of the Age, and more. Every day we get emails and calls from people sharing the story of how End Time Ministries has benefited their life and surrounding area. Misty from Tennessee says, My favorite thing about End Time Ministries is that you base everything you teach on Scripture. You have a genuine love for God and fulfilling the calling He has placed on your life. 
Elizabeth says, End Time Ministries has helped me understand the times we are in, and now I lead a Bible study to help others understand. Pastor D.G. Hargrove from Dallas says, I feel that Irvin Baxter is an oracle of truth. God's hand is surely upon him. I am grateful for his faithfulness to God's purpose. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME and ask how you can become a part of End Time Ministries as we fulfill the Great Commission and change the world together. End Time Ministries has now made Urban's TV show, End of the Age, available to you at no cost every day of the work week. Monday through Friday before politics and religion starting at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, you will be able to watch End of the Age as part of the politics and religion pre-show. So if you were unable to watch the show Monday night, or maybe you would like to see it again, you will now be able to view it as that week's show airs every day 30 minutes before politics and religion. All you do is when 2.30 rolls around, go to endtime.com slash multimedia and select the live webcast option on your phone or computer, just like you would if you were going to watch or listen to politics and religion. Start watching End of the Age with Irvin Baxter Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time during the Politics and Religion pre-show. If you have any questions, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. Don't forget... Prophecy Conference right here in Dallas this coming Friday at 7.30 p.m. For all the details, go to endtime.com slash conferences if you can make it out. I know you're going to be blessed. A brand new lesson I've never taught on publicly before concerning what's going to happen at the second coming. There's no more important question out there than this question. And I know, I know we'll all be blessed by this lesson on Friday evening. So be there if you possibly can, 7.30 p.m. at the Dallas First Church. Uh, back to the phones now. Lisa uh, calling from Oklahoma. Hello, Lisa. Yes, can you hear me? I can, Lisa. I am absolutely desperate for help, and I need your help. I need an, a Social Security attorney so bad I'm on SSI disability, and the government is cheating me out of thousands of dollars for 26 years. They're taking all of my oil royalty income, and they're charging me way beyond what I'm getting, and I'm not even getting nowhere near my full benefit, and, and I can't get an attorney to help me, and I have, I, I'm desperate. Can you help me? Do you know an SSI attorney that can help me? Well, Lisa, I'm sorry I do not. Uh, why can you not get an attorney to help you, though? Well, I don't know. Um, the, the only reasons that I've gotten so far is they only help you if you're not on SSI, and they help you get on SSI, but I'm on SSI, and um, so they, I can't get one to help me with the problems I'm having, though. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I don't even know anyone that specializes in this. Uh, all I can tell you is uh, you're going to have to probably either get on the internet and enter in a search for a Social Security lawyer or something. I don't know anything about your case. And well, uh, um, can I can I give my phone number? And if any SFI attorney is listening, they could you know my I, phone number is four. I'll, I'll tell you what, we better not give out your phone number publicly on the air, Lisa. That might have all kinds of ramifications. But if someone calls here, I tell you what you do. I'm going to ask our call screener to take your number down. And then if a lawyer like that would call here, then we'll give them your phone number, if that's okay. So I'm going to put you on hold, and the call screener can take your number. Thanks a lot, Lisa. We appreciate it very much, and I certainly hope you the best in whatever your situation may be. Uh, let's go now to Arkansas. Hello, Michael. Um, in Isaiah, it says, Woe to those who call it good evil, call evil good called darkness light and light dark darkness. It just sounds much like our government that I just feel like uh, we're in just as much of a dire straits as any other country. I don't see there's no hope without preacher or pastor, I guess is what I'm saying. Just, uh, just want your thoughts on that. 
Well, uh, I think you're right that there have always been throughout history uh, eras of iniquity when people became so perverted that good would be regarded as evil and evil would be regarded as good. And like you say, we're seeing that in some circles right now. Uh, Like, for instance, you're considered almost evil. They'll call you a hater if you do not favor homosexuality. So they call that evil, and yet the Bible calls that, uh, for when you stand against evil, they, the Bible calls that good. So I think your point is exactly right. Uh, now, as far as uh, what the escape is going to be, the Bible does not teach a pre-trib rapture. Uh, I know a lot of people think it does, but um, I started out believing in a pre-trib rapture. I found myself teaching against the very thing the scriptures taught, so I was forced to change my mind uh, on that particular point. Uh, we know that there has there has always been evil. We know that during the days of the early apostles, 11 of 12 of those were martyred for the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't have a martyr complex. I'm not trying to be martyred. I don't want to be martyred, uh, yet I am willing to be if that's uh, the way that God intends for me to go. So I I don't know whether I'm helping you any at all here or not, Michael, but uh, I'd welcome any follow-up question you have here. I guess our hope is in Jesus Christ. Well, it certainly is. And, you know, we can look on the dark side. Like, I've had a lot of people say to me, well, if— if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and he doesn't destroy the United States of America, he'll have to repent to Sodom. I, I, my reply to them is this, and I understand the point they're making. I am absolutely appalled at what happened in New York over the weekend with the uh, approval of same-sex marriage. Uh, on the other hand, there were uh, God said, if you can find ten righteous in Sodom, I will spare the city. Uh, Well, can we find 10 righteous in the United States of America? I believe we can. I believe we can find a lot more than 10. So uh, looking on the opposite side instead of on the dark side, uh, there is still hope, I believe. And that's the reason we're on the air every day preaching. I think it's critical. We need ministers to stand up and not only preach against sin, but preach for righteousness. Uh, I, I I preach against sin here, as all of you know, if you listen, and I've been very open about my opposition to same-sex marriage because it is an abomination in the sight of God. At the same time, there's more to the gospel than preaching against that, but the gospel is that eternal life comes through Jesus Christ, that if a person wants to have peace and joy in their life, Uh, that Jesus Christ is the way to peace and joy, not only deliverance from sin, but access into eternal life. So uh, I think we need to preach both against sin and for the wonderful provision of the kingdom of God. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, Now then, going to Ohio, listening on the Internet. Hello, Randy. What you got on your mind? Uh, try, try it again, Randy. You're breaking up on me. Hello. Can you hear me? I can now. All right. Uh, God bless you and your ministry, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've been watching your show on the seven trumpets. Yes. And my question has to do with Revelation 8, 1, and 2, saying that uh, the seven angels aren't given the seven trumpets until after the seventh seal is open. So can I assume that all seven seals have already been opened? Uh, No. Uh, The reason people would assume that is if the book of Revelation is in chronological order from front to back. But there's much proof that it is not in chronological order. It is in in an order. Randy, let me see if I can describe it to you. The seven seals tell the story once ending at Armageddon. Then the trumpets tell the story Uh, a different aspect of the story, also ending at Armageddon. The vials are the real short story, and they're not even, the first one's not even unleashed until after the mark of the beast has been passed out, but they also end at Armageddon. So the seals are the long story in an Armageddon, the trumpets are the shorter story in an Armageddon, and the vials are the real short story in an Armageddon. For example, 
There, the Lord comes and the heavens depart like a scroll in Revelation chapter number 6, verse 12 through 16. Then you have the Lord coming again in Revelation chapter 11, verse number 15, when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. Then you have the two harvests in Revelation 14, the harvest of the church, which is the rapture, and the harvest of the earth and cast into the great wine press where blood will flow uh, by the space of 1,600 under furlongs to the horse bridles. That's Armageddon. Those two things happen simultaneously. And then you get over to chapter number uh, 16, where the battle of Armageddon is uh, recorded in verses 12 through 16. In verse 15 is the last minute warning. Behold, I come as a thief. And then church, verse number 16, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Then he backs up and tells about the judgment of the great whore in chapter 17 and 18. And then in chapter 19, you see another account of the battle of Armageddon. And then you get to chapter 21, and it's time for the marriage of the bridegroom to the bride. So what I'm saying is the rapture is described several different times in the book of Revelation. The destruction of Babylon is described several times in the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, and that's the way the book of Revelation is structured. Well, I appreciate your explanation. It would probably be less confusing if they had numbered Revelation 8.1 as Revelation 7.18. Yeah, and you make a really good point there, because there were no chapters and verses in the original uh, writings, and whoever picked that, that place to divide the chapter, they did create some confusion, because uh, it would have been easier to understand if they had done that. You're right. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Uh, you know, the the book of Revelation is so marvelous. It is the unveiling of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation is really not the book of Revelation. If you look at the first verse, it says the, re the revelation of Jesus Christ or the revealing of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation is really a 22-chapter dramatization of the second coming. That's how important this is to God. He devotes the entire last, last book of the Bible to the second coming of Jesus Christ. I mean, it is going to be so absolutely wonderful. And we're approaching it now. The prophecies of the book of Revelation are telling us of events that are going to culminate at the second coming. Everything, the seven seals lead to the second coming. The seven trumpets lead to the second coming. The seven vials lead to the second coming. Everything points to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it's told, it's, you know, it's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the same account Four different accounts of the life of Jesus Christ. That's sort of what you have in the book of Revelation. Uh, the book of seals ends at Armageddon. The, I mean, the seven seals end at Armageddon. The seven trumpets at Armageddon. The seven vials at Armageddon. So it's sort of structured in the same way, but all of it telling the story of the unveiling of Jesus Christ to this world when every eye shall behold him. Uh, before we go to our next caller, we're getting close to... Uh, our break here. And so if you're on the f uh, phones right now, please stay right there and we'll get to you immediately in the next segment. But uh, I'm going to be teaching on the second coming this coming Friday evening at the Dallas First Church. Uh, that will be Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, whatever you do, make it out. This is going to be uh, an incredible time together, 5606 West Illinois Avenue in Dallas. Let me repeat that one more time, 5606 West Illinois Avenue in Dallas, 730 the 29th of July, this coming Friday. So if you can be with us, please make it out there. We'll have all of our materials there. All of our DVDs will be there if you want to take some of those home with you. And we're really excited about that particular meeting with Pastor Tom Foster in the southern portion of Dallas. It's going to be a great time. So bring some friends with you. There's no admission charge. Uh, so everyone is welcome to attend. We're going to have a great time. God bless you. And we'll have one more segment. You've heard about the New World Order, but do you know what it really means? The Bible predicts that a great world government will be established on earth before Jesus Christ returns to establish his 1,000-year reign of peace. 
Could it be that the new world order is actually world government? Urban Baxter proves this question to be true without doubt in the DVD, New World Order is World Government. Request your copy of New World Order is World Government for a gift of $20 or request the CD for just $7. Call 1-800-END-TIME. The Bible predicts a war that will kill a third of mankind. This war will originate from the river Euphrates. The majority of that river happens to flow through the nation of Iraq, where America has 120,000 troops right now. What are the chances that the war on terror could turn into this war predicted to kill over 2 billion people? Don't be caught off guard by this 2,000-year-old prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME and request your copy of World War III for a gift of $20 or more. The question is not if it will happen, but when. You can now download one-hour sessions of Irvin Baxter's Understanding the End Time DVD series and more directly to your digital library. No matter your location, whether it be across the street from the End Time campus, a few states away in your local coffee shop, or even on the other side of the world in the comfort of your own home, with internet access, you can now have End Time product downloaded immediately to your smartphone, iPad, or personal computer, making prophecy teaching available to you and your friends at virtually anywhere and anytime in your daily commute. God is opening doors for End Time Ministries to fulfill Matthew 24, 14, which says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Visit our website at endtime.com, download End Time product, and have it in your possession today. Once again, that's endtime.com, E-N-D-T-I-M-E.com. And now to Georgia. Hello, Grady, calling from the great state of Georgia. What's on your mind, Grady? Yes. I've talked to you a couple times before. I made a couple of, a lot of notes here, and I can't talk about it all, but I've never heard you say what you thought about the two witnesses. But what's interesting to me, uh, Brother Baxter, is that when these two witnesses immediately ascend, and it sounds like the same event that Paul talked about in the Corinthians into the clouds, that uh, that is the uh, seventh angel sounds immediately after that. It says, and it says, and the second war is passed, which is the sixth trumpet, and the, behold, the third war comes quickly. Could you re- uh, respond uh, to what you think about that? The two witnesses have just left into the clouds, into the heavens, and now he says, the second war is passed. And behold, the third world comes quickly, which is the seventh trumpet, which refers to the rapture. Yeah, I really believe that the when the two witnesses go up, that probably is the rapture. Uh, you know, when you when the these things are written in prophecy, uh, sometimes events overlap. And the reason I believe that is because. In Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6, it talks about those that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus that did not take the mark of the beast, did not worship the image of the beast. It says, and when these lived and reigned with Christ, this is the first resurrection. So I tend to think that since it says that's going to be the first resurrection, that the two witnesses will probably be a part of that first resurrection. Uh, so I think those accounts, there sort of overlap. Uh, I'm, I'm not willing to argue with someone if they don't think I'm correct on that, but it looks like to me that that's actually what's going to happen, that when the two witnesses go up, that's when the rapture of the church will occur as well. Well, I think that, in my opinion, I'm not a man of authority on all this either, but I think that you're correct about that and that it's interesting to think that these two witnesses, I'm thinking also that the two witnesses, prophetically speaking, probably is more than just two people. Uh, That is my thoughts about this. And uh, I have, uh, I don't know, I know you're a busy man, and I sent you an email on that headed, that the heading of it was uh, Christ the First Fruits. And I don't know when you read your emails, but I put my phone and everything on it. And I know you don't have time to talk to people like me very much as far as particular times. Uh, But 
I have sent you an email, and I wanted to hear from you on that. It has something to do with what we're just talking about here. Well, I'm not sure I've seen that email, Grady. Uh, I have a staff here that helps me because uh, it is impossible for me to personally answer each one, and so they normally uh, sort through those things and see if there are things that demand my attention, and uh, otherwise they try to respond to those things. But um, just to respond to what you're saying here, um, uh, we know that in chapter 11 that that is the chapter devoted to the final three and one and a half years. Of course, there are other parts of Revelation that also address the final three and a half years. But the 11th chapter uh, definitely begins with the Great Tribulation beginning and then it ends with the Great Tribulation ending. Uh, so I do believe now as far as the identity of the two witnesses, we know that Satan will have his two witnesses, the Antichrist and the false prophet. God will have his two witnesses. I do believe there are two literal people. I know some people have said, well, it's a symbol of uh, the Old Testament saints and the church. I personally believe it's two definite men uh, that will actually die and lay in the streets for three and a half days. So I do believe that that, and I believe that these two men will uh, preach all during the Great Tribulation and will be a thorn in the side of the Antichrist and the false prophet. They will know what they're going to do before they do it, and they're going to know it because they understand what the prophecies say. So they're going to be uh, very much fighting against the program of the Antichrist, his one world government, his one world religion. And then finally, when their ministry is finished, then God will allow the Antichrist to kill them, and they'll be dead for three and a half days and then raised from the dead. That's what I believe about it. I do very much so. I think this is the most exciting thing that we're reading about, the end time and the revelation of Jesus Christ. I heard you speak of it earlier, but I also heard, heard the third verse. I read the third verse, blessed is he that readeth, and I'm supposing it means to understand the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. So I'm excited about it. I'm reading a lot in Revelation, and I appreciate your output on that. And uh, I would like to remind you again, if you run across that and never have the time, and I know I, I don't see how you have time for anything much for this type of stuff, but the heading of it, like I said, is Christ the First Proof, and I have two slides that I would like for you to look at sometime, and if you have time. I, I will certainly, af- after this program, ask my staff here, if they have come across that. Uh, when did you send that to us, Grady? It's been a couple of weeks ago, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll check on that. I appreciate that very much. Uh, appreciate all the emails, and we do try to respond to all of them. Uh, like you say, uh, busy, busy, and we never get done. Uh, every night I go to bed thinking about all the things I didn't get I done that I, day. Uh, but uh, but it's still a privilege to be involved in God's work. Hey, Grady, thank you very much, and, and thank thanks you. a lot for the email. I will try to track that down. I, I do appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, the I think the big thing is, and I think Grady was talking about it, how do we respond to these things? I mean, when we see these prophecies coming to pass, I know how we're responding to it here at End Time. Our number one priority is seeking and saving that which is lost. Uh, these prophecies aren't given to us just to discuss for intellectual reasons, uh, but the prophecies are given to us. The Bible says the uh, spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus said, I tell you these things before they come to pass so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. Now, this is the reason prophecy is given to us. Uh, Jesus told them, I'm going to die, be buried, and raise again the third day. And he told them before it happened because he knew that his death was going to be very traumatic for his disciples. But somewhere along the line, they remembered, especially when the reports came of his resurrection, they started to remember You know, he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it again. Now we see what he was talking about. And you know, after his resurrection, he appeared to two disciples on the Emmaus Road, and they were sort of mourning and talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. And he had appeared to them in such a way that they didn't recognize who he was. They thought he was a stranger. And after they told him their concerns, he said, Oh, fools and slow of heart 
to believe the scriptures? Don't you understand what the Bible says, how that Christ must first die, suffer and die and be buried and raised again the third day? And the Bible says he opened unto, opened their understanding to the scriptures. Well, then finally they arrived at the home of these two disciples. They asked him in for dinner. And when he broke the bread at dinner, all of a sudden he departed from their midst and they realized who he was. But he opened their understanding so that they were able to understand the prophecies, uh, understand the scriptures. And so that's what we attempt to do here at End Time Ministries. Uh, We believe that, that we're called to talk about the prophecies of the end time, and we have them by the hundreds now. There are so many prophecies about the second coming of Jesus Christ, and we're approaching that time right now. So that's what we're trying to do here. And that's the reason we've produced our brand new set of Understanding the End Times. Uh, There's going to be a total of 14 DVDs in this set. There were 10 in the original, but there were so many things we felt like we had to add and cover, and we redid everything from zero. So it's going to be a brand new production. Uh, Some of the same subjects are covered, but covered more extensively now, of course. Anyway, of the 14 DVDs that are coming, 12 of them are ready today. So if you'd like to receive those 12, you can call us at 1-800-END-TIME, and uh, the operators will explain to you what all's involved. But I know many of you may have uh, purchased the first 10 years ago. I think we, that production was like in 2001. Well, this is 10 years later. So everything is updated. Everything is done on a much higher level, and you're going to really enjoy it. We're getting such good remarks about it. I think it's going to be a blessing to you. So anyway... It's for you if you'd like to call our operators. The number to call is 1-800-END-TIME. You also can order on our website at endtime.com. Now, in addition to that, let me remind you one more time, and please give me your undivided attention right now. We are taking these DVDs containing prophecies that have been sealed since they were given 2,500 years ago, not understood by anyone until now. There are things that are being opened to our understanding now that have never been understood before. And God told Daniel that's the way it would be. In Daniel 12, 9, Daniel was praying to understand his own prophecies that he himself had written. He wrote it down. He wrote what God told him to write, but he didn't even understand what it meant. And so he was praying to understand his own prophecies. And here was the reply in verse number 9 of chapter 12 of Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Daniel, you're not going to understand. The original 12 apostles will not understand. They won't understand for the next 2,500 years. But in the time of the end, I'm going to open the understanding and I'm going to place these prophecies in the hands of the end time church for the purpose of telling everybody about my second coming. Well, that's happened now, and these 14 hours of DVD contain those prophecies. If you're interested in receiving your own copy, call us right now. 1-800-END-TIME is the number. Our operators are standing by. Politics and Religion is a production of End Time Ministries. We are a daily one-hour broadcast dedicated to bringing you the prophetic fulfillments happening every single day. If you would like to listen to archive programs, subscribe to End Time Magazine, find a prophecy conference, order End Time products, or subscribe to our free weekly e-newsletter Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and take advantage of everything that the website has to offer. To be a part of End Time Ministries, partner with us and help this message go to the entire world. End Time Ministries is a partner-supported ministry. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our loyal partners and listeners for helping make politics and religion and in time ministries possible.
This program proves that the system of implementing 666 is being set up right now. The U.S. government is attempting to establish a national ID through the standardization of driver's licenses. The world is being prepared for the mark of the beast right now. For a gift of $25 or more, you can have a copy of today's program with Irvin Baxter and Mark Lerner, Could U.S. Escape 666, Mark of the Beast? Simply go to endtime.com or give us a call today at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. I am so excited to introduce you to 10 lessons making up our Understanding the End Time Prophecy Series. The first one is the United States in the Bible. The second one is the New World Order is World Government. The third one, Islam and Bible Prophecy. The fourth one, World War III. The fifth one, Israel's God-given destiny. Number six, Israel, God's prophetic time clock. Number seven, Holy Roman Empire Reborn. Eight, Antichrist and the False Prophet. Nine, 666, Mark of the Beast. And then number 10, the coming one world religion. I think a lot of you are going to want to have all 10 of these marvelous prophecy lessons. If you go through just these 10 DVDs, each of them one hour, you are going to know more about Bible prophecy than the average student graduating with a degree from a theological seminary. We need to know where we are right now. Jesus Christ said, I tell you these things before they come to pass so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. So the number to call one more time, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com. You can now have all 10 brand new Understanding the End Time DVDs filmed in End Time's new cutting edge studio with green screen technology and beautiful full screen graphics. All 10 hours are just 155. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME right now.